Of course. Yeah. I do the rap stuff, Baron's a stand up. But don't try to brand us or put us in handcuffs for fans up. Joe's and got some music too. It feels new, but it's not confusing. New Negro, some people are scared of. A word of a scene they was not aware of. We heard you believe what the media get told you. Them old ideas get blown up. Behold a new Negro. This, that, and a third. Man, you say you seen it all and you sound absurd. I'ma tell you one you for sure ain't heard. I'ma tell you one you for sure ain't heard. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Welcome to the new Negroes. I'm Baron Vaughn. And I'm Open Mike Eagle. Uh, and, and thank you guys for coming out tonight. Yes. Thank you for saying, I'm not scared, I'm going out. Right. And to those of you at home, thank you for being scared and staying in. <laughs> we need those sweet, sweet ratings. And a special thank you to you, Barry. Me? Yeah. I know how hard it was for you to come out tonight. I mean, you know, this is our show. Yeah, but... I'm scared of everything? Yes. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie. On the way over here, there was a cop in the lane next to me, uh -oh. right? Exactly. And I got nervous, so I was just like, 10 and 2 and keep on driving and look ahead and nothing is happening. Not gonna die, not gonna die on the way to my own show. I'm not gonna die. I'm not suspicious. I am delicious. Oh, he's fucking gone. Okay. Oh, Jesus. What am I, a nerd? You know what I mean? He does that every day. I do. But I just did something that, uh, that changed my life. I watched this show about doomsday preppers, right? Mm. And go bags. These are people who are afraid of the end of the world. And they're constantly making bags containing all the things you need if you gotta go, like real quick, like in a crisis. Oh, I need one of those. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid of a mass scale power outage because I have no survival skills whatsoever. Mm. I can't build shit, I can't grow shit, don't know shit. <laughs> That's actually a great idea, Bear. Okay, wait, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being clear. Actually, let me, let me just back up. I saw that go bag shit on TV, and I thought these people are crazy because they haven't invented go bags for everyday apocalypses. You know, micro apocalypses, micropolypses, uh, trademark pending. So, like a go bag for that time when I accidentally called my barber dad. Exactly, Mike. That's a micropolypse or an open micropolypse. Okay, this one time I was at a party, right? And then uh, I ended up singing the wrong words to Juicy, Mike. Uh-oh. Juicy, exactly. Ugh. I was like, it was all a dream. I used to read Highlights Magazine. And then a bunch of people just turned around. I was like, this motherfucker just say Highlights? <laughs> and at that moment, I wish I could have just, you know, like opened a bag, thrown down a smoke pellet, and just like projected a hologram biggie. And that would have given me one more chance. <laughs> Get the hell out of there because they're hypnotized. <laughs> All right. Anyway, you guys ready for the first comic? Yes. Well, this comedian coming to the stage right now is from the great state of Louisiana. That's right. And if you like jazz, you're going to like that ass. <laughs> Please welcome the big black voodoo daddy, Josh Johnson. <laughs> Ever since uh, I was a kid and my voice changed, I've been told by people all over the country, uh, people of different ethnicities, backgrounds, I've been told by people that I have an incredibly white voice. That's what they say. <laughs> and people try to act like they can't hear it, but if I called and then showed up, you'd be surprised. Like, <laughs> even my laugh is like, ha, ha, ha. Like, every time I laugh, someone somewhere gets audited. Like, that's what... <laughs> But I didn't realize how like, white my voice sounded to people until I was in Louisiana, where I grew up, and uh, I was running for the bus. And the bus in Louisiana is not like the bus anywhere else, because the bus in Louisiana comes once a year. It's a big deal. You need to make it knees to chest, okay? The stakes are high. I don't know if the bus stops. I've never been on it. But I was running so fast and so hard that I knocked down this old man, and I mean, I cleared him, okay? <laughs> Normally, I'd feel bad, but it's the closest my little body's ever come to football, so I was pretty excited. I was like, he might be dead. Look at me go. <laughs> you know? 
But I did feel bad, so I let the bus go. I helped him up to his feet. It was this, it was this old black man, and, and I even realized that he was blind, so I saw his stick. So I grabbed his stick. I put his stick back in his hand, and I was like, sir, I'm so sorry. I hope you're not injured. You know, you came out of nowhere. Please forgive me. And then this old blind black man went, get your hands off me, honky! And I was like, sir. <laughs> sir, I'm black. I'm black like you. <laughs> and he was like, nice try, cracker. Like there was nothing, there was nothing I could do. I never had to prove I was black for so I got mad, but then the matter I got, the whiter I sounded. Until the point where I was just standing from like, by golly, I'm black, gosh darn it. <laughs> there was nothing I could do, it was terrible. <laughs> when I was a kid, I'd just sit in my room and read encyclopedias, which is not a kid you want to talk to, you know? <laughs> I read a lot of history books, you know, just sitting in my room, read a lot of world history, American history, Southern history, because I grew up in Louisiana, I just wanted to know. And one of the things I read that's always tripped me out, right? is that like, after the Civil War, they let the slaves go. But the slaves still lived in the South. So you probably ran into your ex-slave like all the time. <laughs> Which has gotta be the most awkward ex-run-in in history. Just like, oh my God, there he is. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Hey! How are you doing? Are you mad? <laughs> like that's, what else? I mean, what's she gonna do? I actually, no lie guys, I, I straight up, I had a nightmare that I was a slave, which wasn't even the worst part of the nightmare. The worst part is that I was the worst slave in human history. I was the worst, I was so bad. I was yelling at the slave, and I was like, I'm not trying to start a revolution, I can't pick it up, all right? No, I passed out from heat stroke twice today, okay? You can whip me if you want, but I'm anemic, so I will bleed out. And that's on you, okay? Oh, you're gonna kill me? Please kill me. Please kill me. I would love for you to, this heat is what's killing me. I've had hay fever for two months. And then they moved me into the house, but they didn't teach me how to read, so I don't know any recipes. So the food is so bad that even the slaves are mad. Like, everyone is mad at me. And then I almost burned the house down trying to boil some water, you know? <laughs> to the point where Massa comes up to me at the end of the dream and he's like, look, uh, look, I don't know what to do with you. You free, okay? Like I can't. <laughs> Guys, I'm Josh Johnson, thanks so much. This next comedian and I went to the same damn high school. Please help us welcome to the stage, Will Miles. <laughs> I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Shout out Chicago. Hell yeah. I went back like two weeks ago, and I could tell I was back home because I put on the news. And on one of the stories, they said they had tried to rob a 91-year-old black woman, and that's messed up. But then they cut to her, and she just said, shit. <laughs> Motherfucker tried to rob me. <laughs> I was like, all right, Chi-Town, that's how we do. That's how we do. Good shit. <laughs> I do miss New York every now and then. It's a good city. But what I really miss is the trains out there. I love trains so much. I'll be riding the train and I'll look down at someone's lap and their phone's in their lap and I'll read their personal text messages. <laughs> it's a full invasion of privacy, but I have fun doing it, so I think it's okay. But I was doing that one day and I accidentally found out someone was crazy because I looked down and I saw this person was texting the contact me in her phone. <laughs> and at first I was like, maybe that's a cool way to spell May. I don't know about. Let me look again. I looked again. And the blue was the white, the white was the blue. She was definitely texting herself. And then she would text herself, then hold it out and go, <laughs> And it happened a lot, like stop after stop, she would just text herself and go, <laughs> To the point where like people were getting on the train to try to sit next to her, and I just made eye contact with them and I'm like, mm. Just go around, trust me. You don't want to do it. <laughs> 
But then she got off the train, and I sat down in her seat, and I wrote down everything I'm telling you right now on my phone. Because I was like, that might be funny later. I'll write it down. Then I held out my phone. I went, ha, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I get to look at the internet all day for work. I'm a writer. Uh, and it's good, because I get to see a lot of different stuff that I don't get to, like, look at a lot, like news stories on Twitter. I like looking at, at news stories that I find on the internet because you see some fun stuff. Like, I, I saw a news story that Russian hackers have been pretending to be black teens online. <laughs> and I got excited when I read that because I was like, ooh, there's no way they're good at this. <laughs> That's great, I can't wait to find out. Like, American white people don't know how black teens exist, so it's like a Russian guy is not gonna have any idea. So I was like, all right, let me check this out. So I went to a Republican senator's post about healthcare, and I was like, here we go, I'm gonna find this troll. And then I looked, and the first comment was a black teen with a backwards cap. And I saw that backwards cap and I was like, hmm. We don't really do backwards caps anymore. <laughs> then I looked at what he wrote and he wrote, we gotta trust the 1%, they know how to live. We gotta trust 45, MAGA. Let's just let him and his friends run the country. And I'm not saying black teens don't talk like that. <laughs> but they don't. <laughs> So I saw that and I looked right underneath and the first comment underneath was somebody else who just commented, man, that nigga up there is a Russian. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to another part of Twitter. I went to black Twitter, same website. <laughs> Looks a little different. And I went to a Twitter account and it had a picture and the picture underneath it, it said, uh, Safari Samuels gets in fight with Meek Mill outside BET Awards after party. Objectively, a very black Twitter sentence. <laughs> but I saw that, and then I looked right underneath, and the first comment was a black teen with a forwards cap. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. <laughs> I like this. And then I saw what he wrote, and he wrote, that nigga got those pants at H&M. <laughs> and I saw that, and I was like, okay, now that's a real black teen. <laughs> that's something that's been said about me on the train before. <laughs> but they're accurate. All right, you guys are great. I'm on my house. Bring out the final comic of the night. Please welcome to the stage the one, the only, Dwayne Kennedy. Thank you, everybody. I uh, I don't know. You believe in God? Anybody? Anybody still on that chair? Always the black folks. White people. <laughs> no, Dwayne. No, no, Dwayne. No, 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 no. I have a 401k. So no, 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 no. But go ahead with your little skit. <laughs> Those people are so religious. I'm, uh, I'm trying, I'm not really where I used to be on the God tip. I, you know, when you're young, you're like, oh man, God, then you get older, like, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, perhaps. You know what I mean? I'm trying to hold out hope. Like, I'm not like an atheist. By, I'm like, because I'm on the fence. I'm not a complete atheist, but I'm not completely, I'm like a Justin K atheist. You know what I mean? Just like a case of, you know what I mean? Because if God does come back, you don't want to be the only one at the orgy who didn't believe. You know what I mean? It's like, woo! I, I, I knew you was coming back, God. I didn't know it was going to be tonight. But, uh, <laughs> And then some places God says, it says, God says in the Bible, some places it says, do not judge the time of my coming. I will come like a thief in the night. <laughs> well, here's the thing about that. I live on the south side of Chicago. You know who comes like a thief in the night on the south side of Chicago? Everybody, 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 everybody. Everybody comes like a thief in the night on the south side. And she got to say, hey, God, rather than coming like a thief in the night just to be on the safe side, you might want to come like a mailman in the morning. <laughs> you know, that's an abusive relationship, you know. And they tell you not to worship any other gods while I'm gone. Well, when you coming back, baby? I don't worry about when I'm coming back. Don't worry about it. I might come back tonight, might be a year from, might be a millennium. And there better not be no other guys at the crib when I get back. 
I'm back. Huh? Who is this? You worship enough? Let me see. Let me see your phone. Huh? Who is it? Uh, Vishnu. What? <laughs> huh? Oh, you like that, huh? You like them pretty brown wavy hair guys, huh? That's what, that's what you like. Is that what you like? You gonna worship me? Man, it's going better than I thought it was gonna go. Yeah. It's like a Black Panther screening. <laughs> Y'all see that? Black Panther, everybody saw that, yeah. Yeah, man, yeah, so what? <laughs> no, you know, I, I went and saw it. I saw a couple times. No, I, okay, I'm cool with the, you know, it's black folks directed it and wrote it and acted in it and, you know, went and see it like, oh, this is a revolution. Uh, hold on. Movie was made by Disney. You know what I mean? So, uh. <laughs> Disney's financing your revolution. Uh, you got some more revolting to do, because uh... <laughs> the Black Uprising, brought to you by Crest. <laughs> nobody loves God more than black people, though, right? Nobody. Oh, black women said, no, nobody. No, I was at a movie theater once, man, and it was pitch dark, and and an old black woman's cell phone went off. And I knew it was an old black woman's cell phone because she had an old black woman ringtone. Like, praise his name. Praise his name. Pray, hello. Hi. No, babe, I'm at the movie. They done dropped me off at the movie again by myself. Hi. No, we didn't move about this man. He in love with this woman, then she in love with another. It a lot of freak. Huh? No, I ain't do. No, what y'all do? Huh? Cooking green? No, I don't put no ham hocks in my green no more. I just use turkey tail because my cholesterol so high. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Who that talking in the background? Huh? You get my granddaddy? Who my granddaddy on the phone? Who my granddaddy on? Who my granddaddy? Huh? No, this your grandma. He done drop me off at the movie again by my scale. And then said, oh, oh, baby, I got to go. Somebody done hit me in the head with a box of raisin there told me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> People are so rude. There you are, thank you so much. Mike, it's the apocalypse now. Are you afraid to die? No, I fear what happens after death. Hmm. I don't know that I can afford to get into heaven. I was just cast in a commercial about a service that's supposed to help you get into heaven help you get into heaven. How does that even work? Well, why don't I just show you? <laughs> you guys want to see my commercial? Yeah. Well, here it is. You about to die, ain't you? Near death? Well, did you know four out of every seven applications to heaven is denied due to poor credit history? Call us and we will help you fix the ugly scores. Call Southfield and more for a free consultation. And don't end up like my lazy nephew. I was knock knocking on heaven's door. And then they asked me for my credit score. To filter out the bad humans. They use your Equifax and TransUnion. So much paperwork and I'm so tight. I had to submit it without a co-sign. Hoping I listed the right references. And that they overlook my college record. It was really a mess submitting fingerprints to prove no identity theft. Yes, I, did. I got dinged for my city address. Had to list my work history in any hey, arrest. No. I expected more character tests and less of this. Don't be like me. Get your credit fixed. Hey. Held on till 102. I died still under review. Get your credit fixed. When you look back on your life and you're seeking salvation, salvation. You missed a few payments. payments. Call Southfield and more to fix your ugly scores. Southfield and more, we're gonna get you to back. fix your ugly scores. Call Southfield and more, and we'll fix them up.
ugly scores. scores. <laughs> Start saving your money, everybody, because redemption ain't cheap. That's our show, everybody. Let's give it up again for all the comics you guys saw tonight. And remember, if you aren't afraid of Dracula, but you are afraid of Blackula, you're racist. Thank you and good night! Good day. Don't miss out on your glory, cause you missed a few payments. payments. Call Southfield and more to fix your ugly scores. Southfield and more, we're gonna get you to right. fix your ugly scores.